Welcome back to our Tool Time Salute. To golf. to golf. Well, let's get right to it. We have a very special guest for you. That's right. He's number eight in all-time earnings on the PGA Tour. He's in town at the Golf Expo at Cobo Hall. Let's give a warm tool time welcome to Payne Stewart. Uh, thanks for making time to be on the show, you know. You'd think with the kind of cash you're pulling in, you could afford the rest of those trousers. Tim, when you're in the public eye, you have to have a trademark. With me, it's knickers. Uh. With you, it's burns and abrasions. <laughs> uh, well, uh, Mr. Stewart, first things first. How does one go about choosing the right driver? Well, it depends on your ability. Okay. All right? Now, what's your handicap, Al? Tim. <laughs> Actually, it's 16. Well, then, along with a few lessons, you'll want a driver like this. It's an expanded sweet spot. All right. Tim, wh what's your handicap? Pain, 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 pain. What's a handicap? I think of golf as more of a zen lay jujitsu type of thing. His handicap is 35. <laughs> you guys think you're so good? Why don't we take a shot at my golf simulator right here and have a little driving contest? Klaus? <laughs> Now, the way that this machine works is there are sensors in the pad which measure the velocity and the striking angle of the club. The vector of the velocity is then measured... Al, sh shut up and shoot the thing, will you? <laughs> vector velocities. <laughs> 95 yards. Nice shot, miss. <laughs> All right, Payne, see what you got. Two hundred and ninety-one yards. Nice drive. Wow, that was a great drive. Well, I guess this contest is over. Not so fast. Heidi, why don't we bring out my driver? Here you are, Tim. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> What would this be? I know what this is. This is a special driver designed for senior citizens to get more distance. They don't even have to swing it because it's got a 25 caliber charge in it. Not anymore. <laughs> I boarded out to a 44 Magnum. That's cheating. Welcome to my world. Stand back, guys. All right. Fire in a hole. You the man. going in that shirt well it's it's happy hour at the tiki hut and you got to get there by five o'clock otherwise the poo poo platter is picked clean <laughs> do you actually meet women there or just go there to pig out on poo poo <laughs> well, i haven't met anyone yet but i'm forming a social network of people with similar interests people eat their dinner off toothpicks in the middle of the afternoon <laughs> well you know it's a lot of fun why don't you join me for a drink I'd like to. You know how I love fresh poo-poo. <laughs> but Jill's got the flu, and I'm stopping by the pharmacy to pick up some medication. Anything you suggest? Well, these days I'm strictly homeopathic. 
Oh, well, no wonder you're not meeting any women. <laughs> yeah, well, if that's how you feel, fine. Good night, Al. Good night, Tim. Heidi, is anything wrong? No, nothing. Are you sure? Well, actually, Scott and I have separated. He moved out a couple weeks ago. Heidi, I'm so sorry. Why didn't you say something about this before? Because I didn't want to bring my personal problems to work. Why not? Because you said, don't ever bring your personal problems to work. <laughs> Since when do you listen to me? Since you said, I better start listening to you. <laughs> nice going, Mr. Compassion. Listen, I might need a little time off from the show. Take as much time as you need. Thanks, Tim. I gotta go drop off Amy at Scott's. He's got her this week. We can't leave Heidi alone when she's this upset. Take her to the Tiki Hut with you. Well, nothing raises one spirits like a fistful of pot stickers. <laughs> she doesn't need food. She needs a shoulder to cry, okay? Well, I'm not exactly a, an expert on relationships, Tim. Uh, you're a good friend, and, and you're a good listener. Come on, do it for Heidi. Do it for the show. For the show? If she's too upset to come back to work, you're going to have to squeeze yourself into one of those little tight skirts. <laughs> There you go, Ma. Oh, thank you, sweetie. So what are you doing with all these mail order catalogs? Well, now that I'm sick, I finally have time to look through them. Oh, gotta see this. The world's best earwax removal system. <laughs> cool. And if you act now, they'll toss in the world's best bunion scraper. <laughs> all right, off we go. Yeah, we're going to the mall to pick up some CDs. <laughs> You know what? I'll go with you. <laughs> hey, guys, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have to go anywhere. I've got a, a music catalog that'll save you, buddy. Look at this. 15 CDs for a penny. Well, it sounds great, but who's Pat Boone? <laughs> we'll be home before dinner. Okay. Hey, guys. Oh, bad. <sighs> well, honey, how you feeling? How do I look? Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, help is on the way. I got ibuprofen, I got antihistamines, I got decongestants, analgesics, I've got daytime decongestants, I've got nighttime decongestants. You take two of everything here, and that flu will be out of your system in an hour. I take two of everything here, I'll be dead in an hour. You're gonna take the whole hour? So, how is work today? Not so good. Heidi's marriage is in trouble. What? Yeah, she and uh, Scott are separated. Oh, my God, that's terrible. Well, apparently, it hasn't been good for quite a while. Oh, no, I have to call her. She probably wants a woman to talk to. It's all taken care of. She's having dinner with Al. That's a good question. Well, the show's about to be in. Enjoy yourselves, okay? <laughs> Heidi. Hi, Tim. What are you doing here? I thought you needed some time off. I did, too. But then I had dinner with Al. He put everything in perspective. Well, are you and Scott getting back together? I don't know, but I've made it over this first hurdle. I'll really help me get in touch with my rage. Mm. No one brings out rage better than Al. <laughs> Morning, Jim. Morning, Al. <laughs> well, I don't know what you talked about with Heidi, but it did a lot of good. Good going. Well, last night was pretty incredible for me, too, you know? We talked about everything, from the weather to the most intimate details of her life. Forget the weather. How about the other stuff? <laughs> well, basically, you know, after Amy was born, Heidi didn't feel very sexual. Mm. Scott was not understanding, and that turned Heidi off to sex even more. <laughs> so they're not, uh... uh... No, no, not for a while, huh? But before the baby, oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> I've already said too much. I don't want to betray Heidi's confidence. I can respect that. Okay. Now, I could guess some things. If I'm real close, you could just nod. Does everybody know what time it is? That's right. Bit for Tools is proud to present Tim, the tool man, Taylor, and Al, the most sensitive guy in the world. Morning. Wait a minute. Hold on. Something's different. Let me guess. Let me guess. 
You did something with your hair, didn't you? It's a sinus mask. It's okay, if it doesn't work, it's totally returnable. I'd love to be the second owner of that thing. Before you waste more money on this stuff, Al's got a whole bunch of homoerotic remedies. Why don't I call him? Speaking of work, how's Heidi doing? Very well, thanks to Al. He's taking her to dinner all this week, and he's really taking care of her problem. Heidi must be very grateful to have a friend like Al. Stay in the shower, Al. I got it. Good morning, Borland residents. Uh, wrong number. Bye-bye. <laughs> Who was it? It sounded like one of the Muppets. <laughs> Is something wrong? Heidi just answered the phone at Al's house, 7.30 in the morning. She must have spent the night there. Now I feel sick. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I've got this image of Al and Heidi. <laughs> Get out of my head. Get out of my head. Heidi did not sleep with Al. First of all, she's a married woman. And, and second of all, she, she wouldn't go for a guy like Al. Her husband's tall and handsome. I mean, he spends more time in the gym than Al does at Hickory Farms. <laughs> Heidi, I'm not saying that it happened, but I can understand how a woman like Heidi could fall for a guy like Al. In what universe? <laughs> Women like Heidi have had the gorgeous hugs. The second time around, they want somebody less exciting, more dependable. Me, I went for number two first. You know, you don't understand. You do not understand. Al is like a dependable four-door rambler. And Heidi, like a 12-cylinder Ferrari. They don't belong in the same garage. And yet she parked overnight there. Nothing happened. But I won't rest until I find out what's going on. Oh, damn. Look, even if they were parked in the same garage, you are not their mechanic. You're just being petty. You want to be petty? Yeah, yeah. Why should you be the only one with an incredibly desirable woman? Clam. Hey. Hey, would you help me put my tool belt on? I just touched up my nails. Okie dokie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, I just want to tell you how wonderful it's been for me these past few days. Mm. Well, it's, it's been pretty incredible for me, too. You're really a special lady. Thanks. <laughs> you have a good show. Uh, you too. <laughs> Morning, Tim. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> hey, how you doing, buddy? Good. You know, I, uh, Called your house this morning and Heidi answered the phone. So you're Kermit? Maybe. Uh -huh. Well, anyway, Jill and I got to talking and we were thinking that maybe you and Heidi were. What? You know. Even though I told her that a you know, rambler couldn't possibly jumpstart a Ferrari, but, you know. Uh, so what you're saying is that it would be impossible for a beautiful woman like Heidi to be interested in Al Borland? No, I don't believe it. But other people are talking. Well, those other people can think what they want. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, would those other people be right or would they be wrong? Well, uh, Tim, are you asking me to talk about my personal life at work? Yes, I think it's about time we opened up and shared our experiences. <laughs> okay. I, uh... I actually have something I'd like to share. Let it go, brother. Don't hold anything back. Well, the truth is, Heidi and I... Yeah, yeah? ...are entitled to our privacy. <laughs> There's 40 bucks well spent. Hey, if this happens to be the world's best tissue disposer, it shreds decontaminates, and deodorizes. <laughs> wonder if it would work on your meatloaf. I'll be back in about an hour, all right? Where are you going? Uh, I'm going to go over to Alice's house to do some repairs. Hey, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm a conscientious landlord, son. Oh, the same conscientious landlord who said, Al, do you really need heat in February? <laughs> 
What are you going to fix with these binoculars? That is such an insulting question. I'm not even going to answer it. You have sunk this low. You're going to go spy on poor Al. I just don't want him hurt. We need those back weapons. No, forget about it. You're not going there. There's nothing wrong with being curious about Al and Heidi. You are not curious. You're obsessed. I'm not obsessed. Last night, you cried out their names in your sleep. And after that, I just cried. It's torture having this image filling up my brain. Especially with space, it's such a premium. <laughs> Ooh, something smells good out here, Wilson. What are you doing? Well, I'm boiling up some sap for the Michigan Maple Festival. Speaking of saps, what do you hear what Al's been doing? Uh, 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 don't have to tell me. Heard all about it. What? What Al told me is in strictest confidence. Uh, you know, Wilson, uh, I could get you a uh, riding mower from Benford, a 16 horse rear bagger for cost plus 10. <laughs> Sorry, neighbor, I can't be bought. Why would Al tell you and not me? Well, maybe because I didn't search his locker for long brown hairs. <laughs> Which, according to the lab, either belonged to a collie or Al's mother. Tim, why are you so interested in Al and Heidi's personal life? I don't know. I've never cared about Al's personal life before, and I've never even asked Heidi about hers. But you put the two of them together, and there's that image again. <laughs> Tim, have you ever heard of the term cognitive dissonance? You know I'm not into politics. <laughs> cognitive dissonance is when pieces of our lives no longer make sense. Beliefs we always held true seem to be false, so we have to reorder our way of thinking. <laughs> Are you saying a Rambler could hook bumpers with a Ferrari? It's very possible. No, no, no. If what you say is true, then everything I believe is false. No, no, Tim, that's not necessary. Let me go with this for a minute. Let me go, okay? <laughs> this means that maybe cars aren't the most important thing in the world. Oh, oh no, wait a minute. The, the, the opera's more manly than football? Neighbor. Al's mother is thin? <laughs> Tim, it's not easy to change one's perceptions of things, but it can be very healthy. Some people might even say it's a growth experience. Okay, well, Wilson, how far does this go? I mean, how do I really know you are who I think you are? Well, how do I know you're who I think you are? How do I know you're the one that said that? How do I know you heard what I said? How do I know you're really here? Who else would have the time to come out and listen to this silly conversation? <laughs> uh, yeah. Can I talk to you for a minute? I don't think so. I'm not going to feed your appetite for lurid gossip and tawdry innuendo. And by the way, I installed an alarm on my locker. <laughs> I came here to tell you that I shouldn't have got involved in your personal life like this. From now on, your business is your business, right? Well, I appreciate that. Listen, if there's any other part of my life you want to talk about, I'm an open book. I'm not much of a reader, thanks. <laughs> have a good show. Okay. Good morning, Al. Hey, how are you? Oh, I feel so great this morning. Yeah, I feel pretty great myself. How about Sorrentino's for dinner tonight? All week long, it's fettuccine madness! You know, I'm afraid I can't make it. Why not? Well, thanks to the things you said, I saw Scott last night. And we're gonna get back together. Isn't that great? <laughs> oh, that's so great! Yes, that's good for you. Thanks. Yeah. I got you a little something. Oh, you didn't have to do that. No, I wanted to. Um, Here. Thank you. I also want to thank you for letting me sleep on your hide bed the other night. Well, now I call it the Heidi bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the Tiki Hut cookbook! You like it? I love this! Now I can make poo-poo at home! <laughs> Heidi, uh, can I just talk to you about one thing? Sure. What? Well, after that night you stayed at my house, uh, Tim got this crazy idea that that uh, you and I might have, uh, how do I say this? Slept together. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. <laughs> and, and he just thought that that was impossible because he doesn't think a beautiful woman like you could, could ever be interested in, in a guy like me. Oh, is that so? Well, let me tell you something, Al. If I weren't married, you're exactly the type of guy I'd be looking for.
Thank you. I uh, wish I wish Tim could hear you say that. You know, I don't think Tim really needs to hear anything. Howdy, Wilson. Heidi Ho! Not Heidi Ho, let's talk Heidi Al. <laughs> Tim, are you still obsessing about that? Well, I wasn't until today. And I saw Heidi kiss an owl, and no peck in the cheek. She just drove it home. <laughs> Tim? Yeah. Get a hobby. <laughs> Good night. Wait a minute, Wilson. I think you're right about what you said yesterday. And that, nothing's right with me. I think I am suffering from that thing, a communist discotheque. <laughs> Tim, can we chat about this tomorrow? I am a little busy. Wilson, where do you keep a copy of Lady Chatterley's Lover? I gotta get some new friends. Boy, you'd think with all the money you pulled down, you could afford the rest of those pantaloons. <laughs> You know, you think with the money you make, you can afford the rest of us. <laughs> I, have, I, have, I have to say the word culotte just once. Yes, you don't want to be the only one with an incredibly desirable woman. <laughs> <laughs>